Okay, so welcome to this continuation on the geodesic equation. Okay, so here's our uh, current form of the geodesic equation. So, we're now going to um, take um, this to the other side to get yj differentiated with respect to u, x double dot u is equal to negative yj differentiated with respect to ip, x dot i, x dot p. So that's not particularly complicated. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to do something that's a bit spooky now. We're going to contract both sides with, uh, what are we going to contract it with? We're going to contract it with yj with respect to, let me think of an index, v. Why are we going to do that? Uh, well, you can't stop me from doing that. It still holds true if I contract this both sides that it will still, it will still work. Uh, but the reason we're going to do it is because it's going to create, if we contract this with this side, what's it going to create? It's going to create the metric. It, it, y, remember, is this coordinate system locally, which is, um, which is Euclidean. So yju, yjv is the metric tensor of our x-coordinate system. Uh, uh, the metric tensor of our space within the x-coordinate system. Why? Because how do you work out distances if in some arbitrary coordinate system? What you do is you uh, take the vector, you transform it into uh, the a coordinate system in which locally the uh, metric is Euclidean, and then you know how you uh, calculate distances if you've got a coordinate system which is Euclidean. Um, you just use Pythagoras' theorem. Uh, strictly speaking, of course, we're calculating quadrants rather than distances. Distances squared. Um, but that's why we're doing this, because this is going to become the metric tensor. So let's do that. yj differentiated with respect to v, yj differentiated with respect to u, x double dot u is equal to negative yj differentiated with respect to v, v yj differentiated with respect to ip, x dot i, x dot p, and then we can rewrite that as the metric tensor uh, vu, gvu, x dot dot uh, u is equal to negative yj differentiated with respect to v, yj differentiated with respect to ip, x dot i, x dot p. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to isolate uh, this term, because we want the differential equation as d2y, uh, d2 x as a function, dx ds squared as a function of the uh, first derivatives. Okay, so we're going to invert this metric tensor, and hopefully you know that the inverse metric tensor to g uh, vu is going to be the inverse of that is equal to um, well, it's equal to g uh, vu the um, contravariant vector ten uh, metric tensor. Um, of course, what we're going to we're going to contract the free index with this, so we're just going to contract uh, v. Uh, but so what we're going to do is we're going to contract this with, uh, let's say, give me an arbitrary index b. We'll use temporarily v g v u x double dot u is equal to um, this inverse metric tensor here um, g negative g b v y j v y j i p x dot i uh, x dot p. I will probably make a video explaining exactly why this is the inverse of this. It's got to do all to do with um, the raising and lowering indexes and yeah we will do a we'll do a video on it. Um, I, I haven't made that video yet but I will do. Um, Okay, so um, this is the these two are the inverses of one another. So what does it become? It becomes Kronecker delta B U, the identity matrix X dot dot U, and what do we know this is? This is one. Or this is the identity matrix times by some vector here. Uh, so we've effectively got a two by two matrix times by a vector. This is the identity matrix and times by the vector X dot 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 like that. So what is this? This is just going to give the vector x double dot u, but of course it's not going to be, we're going to change the index basically, it's going to be x double dot b, and then it makes sense. So minus g b v y j v y j i p x dot i x dot p. 
Okay, and this monstrosity here, this huge term here, is what we call the Christoffel symbol. B, um, what, which ones is it going to be? Uh, so we've got IP up here, that's a J there. So we've got a free index here, that's B. And then we've got these two indexes down here, which are IP. So the geodesic equation now becomes this x dot i x dot p so that Christoffel symbol is all of this so it's got the three free indexes here the b the i and the p all the rest the v's and the j's are dummy indexes so that is the final geodesic equation there now um I will probably make my own video explaining how you derive this from the metric. You probably can work it out for yourself using the fact that the metric tensor, um, which one would you want? The metric tensor of uh, VI, say, is equal to YJ uh, V YJ I. So if you differentiate now with respect to X, uh, let's say P, have a look at what happens and you can potentially work out how you might uh, come about to isolate this. You're going to get two terms, but if you permute these, sim permute these indexes and uh, round in cycles, then you can, you can get them to cancel, and it's very clever. Uh, forget this bit. Leave this bit out at the front. Just try and work out what this bit is. You've got this. That you just, uh, if we know the metric tensor field, we know this. We just invert the metric tensor field, which we know how to do.